All right. Um, if you go on to the opinions, um, our opinions column section on the platform uh, at the moment, one of the best articles we've got there is from uh, Chris Trotter, uh, and it's been widely published elsewhere. It's a very good piece. And, and you know, I've had some fun with this week. This, this new thing called the Atlas Network. Well, it's not an old thing, uh, a new thing, actually. It's a very old, loose association of um, right wing think tanks, or if you'd like, um, they would call themselves progressive think tanks, or I don't know, economically liberal uh, think tanks. But uh, according to the left, uh, the Twitterati and um, the left trolls and agitators now, everything bad that happens in this country is part of an Atlas conspiracy, an Atlas network conspiracy. I presume I am perceived as part of the Atlas network, though they have not sent me a cheque yet for any money. Um, to discuss what this is about and this new conspiracy theory of the left, um, we are joined now by uh, Chris Trotter. Chris, lovely to have you back with us, mate. Thank you very much, Sean. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right. Well, you couldn't make up the Atlas um, Network conspiracy <laughs> theory, but I guess you could, right? <laughs> well, it, it plays so beautifully to the um, uh, hurt feelings um, of the New Zealand left, and and they're feeling very bruised and and battered at yeah. the moment, and they're desperate for an explanation as to why the country rejected them so violently in the last general election. And this business with the Atlas Network um, is just a godsend as far as, as they're concerned. I mean, first of all, it's real, as you say. Um, it's been in existence since 1981. Uh, it has a history that you can follow. It was set up by uh, a Brit called Anthony Fisher, uh, who's, who's probably most famous, in fact, for setting up um, the Institute of Economic Affairs, which was the think tank which, which contributed hugely to Margaret Thatcher's right. um, economic policy. Yeah. Um, but uh, as I said in the piece, like Che Guevara, who wanted one, two, many Vietnams, Anthony Fisher wanted one, two, many think tanks. Yeah. And that's what the Atlas um, Network is all about. It's about facilitating the growth of classical liberal, um, uh, new right, as it was called back in the 80s, uh, neoliberal, as people would call their ideology today. Um, it was all about setting as many of those up as possible so that the dominant ideological paradigm of the day could be effectively counted. And this is what the left in New Zealand just doesn't get. The, the right-wing think tanks, which, you know, multiplied like mushrooms in the late 70s and early 80s, were a direct response of particularly um, UK and US capitalism to what they saw as an existential threat. And let's just think about what was driving them. In 1973, the British trade unions basically took out the Tory government. In 1974, Richard Nixon elected on one of the biggest landslides in American political history was taken out of the White House by the liberal press. From the perspective of, um, you know, conservative capitalists, the end was nigh. And there is a wonderful graph which shows this in an economic uh, way. Yeah. Way back in the 1920s, 1% of uh, the American population controlled 20, 30% of the wealth. By the mid-1970s, that 1% controlled 9% of the wealth, and it was declining. Yeah. After the right pulled itself together and launched its counterattack, um, 30, 40 years of that, that 1% now controls 20, 30% of the wealth. So that was the point, and they did it. 
they did it by understanding that there is only one way in a democracy that you get control of things, and that is by winning the hearts and minds of the people who cast the vote. Votes, yeah. And how do you win their hearts and minds? You win them with ideas. They understood that it wasn't a battle like 1917 yeah. of workers and peasants with their bayonets and their rifles storming the Winter yeah. Palace. That's not what revolution was anymore. Yeah. It was about ideas. Well, are those, do, ideas. That, do those who are promoting the Atlas conspiracy, um, do they get that? Or not? Or is I, this just a kind of a motive reaction that we've got to have someone to blame? We've got to have a bogeyman. Oh, oh no, they 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 get that it's a battle of ideas, but their way of dealing with the ideas that they don't like is to drive them into the outer darkness, not to engage with them, yeah. not to do what people like Milton Friedman did in the seventies, uh, persuade someone. Uh, to, to make a, a, a television documentary series, I think it was called Free to Choose. Yeah, that's right. Which was enormously influential and made the case for free markets. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was how they got the momentum going. Yeah. They, they argued their case. They said, look, Keynesianism, which was the dominant paradigm economically yeah. at the time, it isn't working. You're not supposed to have inflation and high unemployment. But look, we've got inflation and high unemployment. The theory isn't working. It's not delivering anymore. We've got this idea over here. What do you think of this? Mm -hmm. Hey, how now, do we... I, well, happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. I happen to disagree with, with monetarism and what they were offering, but they were offering it, and they were offering it in a way that made people go, well, hell, can it be any worse? Okay. Well, the be, Atlas Madness started in New Zealand. This conspiracy really started with Meherangi Forbes and a piece she did, strangely enough, funded by the government with much more... And she's received, I've now established, one and a half million dollars at least in government funding for her particular brand of journalism. But she went over to Aussie and did a thing on the Yes, on, on, yep, on the voice boat. Yep. Um, and in fact, it's been revealed that um, the people most closely aligned with the Atlas Network who were involved in the voice thing actually were doing work for the Yes side, which is just hilarious. That, but she, then, right, she right. then threw the whole Atlas thing at David Seymour. Um, my understanding is that Atlas, if you were going to look at the network itself, it has spent a paltry sum in Australia and New Zealand in the last 30 years, like maybe $30,000. But then we look at those who promote this and... Um, Aotearoa Media Collective being one of them, which is owned by uh, Mahina Rangi Forbes and Annabelle Lee Mather, who is the wife of Jim Mather, who was appointed by Willie Jackson to be chairman of the Radio New Zealand Board. And if we were going to look for a web of money changing hands and, and if you like, uh, political influence being welded, um, they just need to look in the mirror, Chris. Well, yes, that that's right. And you know, I, I was particularly um, alarmed um, by the way that um, uh, Ms. Forbes' um, argument developed in that documentary because there was virtually no attempt to actually sort of swing the camera around and say, now let's hear the arguments that were put forward by the side that won. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 